Welcome back. After ignoring the issue for years, the Florida legislature started to address the mental health crisis in the criminal justice system. This is an issue we've been focusing on here at CBS and following our documentary last year, Warehouse, the Life and Death of Tristan Murphy, we wanted to see what the legislature has done. Now, the biggest change this year was a reform to the state's Baker Act, the law that allows police and family members to involuntarily commit a person to a psychiatric facility for 72 hours if they pose an imminent threat to themselves or others. However, the law doesn't provide much help when that 72 hours comes to an end. But a measure passed this year by the legislature requires that type of follow-up care that had been missing. Earlier this week, I spoke to Judge Steve Leifman for his assessment of what the legislature accomplished. I mean, just to put it in some context, uh, this is probably the biggest change in 60 years in the Baker Act. Um, so it's not an easy thing to do. There's all kinds of competing, I don't want to call them interests, but there's competing ideas and philosophy when it comes to civil commitment. So it makes it complicated to open that door. Um, I first want to say that the work that you did helped tremendously because it really helped put this issue at the forefront and in front of legislators who don't see this usually as the big issue that it is. And uh, Representative, you know, former Judge Maney also did a remarkable job because he used to do civil commitment cases when he was up in Okaloosa. Um, so, um, you know, it was a very good uh, step in the right direction. Uh, I particularly like the idea that there's required handoffs and treatment for people coming out of that system. Right now, most people just get dropped and that's part of the problem. Um, they made some tinkering. They did some tinkering around the process. Um, I think the next level, what needs to be done, however, is that we do need to modernize the actual criteria. I also believe that the legislature did some increased funding for the 988 system, uh, but there were other bills, other issues that they could have taken up that they weren't able to. But again, you've been around long enough. This is a process. You know, as you start to look towards next year, next cycle, um, what are going to be the main priorities that you're going to want to see from the legislature beyond expanding the criteria for the Baker Act? What other things do you want to see them take up? Yeah, and and I think that's the nice thing. You know, Representative Maney is like in the middle of his uh, term limit at this point, and he has um, really become the expert in the legislature on this issue. And I know that he is committed to continuing to improve it. So I think he wants to, A, um, you know, modernize the criteria. B, we still need to improve the process in terms of how people get access to the court and how that process moves. You know, one of the things that, that I've been pointing out and, and, and have come back to a few times is the issue of, you know, expanding Medicaid so that so that people who are unable to right now get health insurance, as was the case with Tristan Murphy, you know, may be able to get the mental health care and the, and the physical health care that they actually need that right now they're not able to receive here in the state of Florida. Are there other things that you're looking for? And, and well, more well, broadly, are you, you know, do you see this, do you see at least some sort of a positive sign in terms yeah, of yeah. the fact that these things are actually being discussed? I, I am very encouraged and I, and I think it, for, you know, and looking back, this was a great session for mental health and substance use or behavioral health. Um, but I will tell you, there is a an alternative to expanding all of Medicaid to help this population. Florida should apply for what's called the 1915 I waiver, which Texas has done and several of the other southern states that don't want to expand. They can get expanded Medicaid just for behavioral health by getting a waiver from the federal government. And it's cheaper, it doesn't expand the whole thing. And if that's something they don't want to do, this is a really good alternative to bring billions of new dollars into our system. I mean, Florida gives away about $52 billion in Medicaid expansion dollars of taxes we've already paid. I don't think people understand that. And so a lot of people can't get access to quality care and they end up on the street or homeless or in jail. And, and so it, it's, it's a serious, serious problem, but there are ways to improve it without expanding the whole thing.
I also spoke to Cindy Murphy, Tristan's mother. Tristan, as you may recall, was a diagnosed schizophrenic who went to prison on a littering charge and killed himself with a chainsaw after failing to receive the treatment and medication he required. During the session this year, Tristan's mother traveled to Tallahassee to testify before the Senate committee and meet with legislators. Here are her thoughts on what the legislature did. Well, certainly there wasn't as much accomplished as I would have liked, um, but I have really big goals. I mean, I think the whole system needs to be fundamentally changed and that's not gonna happen overnight, but um, I was encouraged, um, for example, the changes with the Baker Act. I think those are very positive. Um, with the Baker Act, um, I'm glad that there's some funding behind it now so that there can be some sort of wraparound services for people who are involuntarily um, held for treatment and evaluation, um, you know, when they're in a crisis. That's really, really good. And I think just the changes of the Baker Act, it just sort of raises the uh, awareness of diversion, just the whole idea of diversion. I think that's really important. I know that's something that's near and dear to Judge Leifman as well. Um, because Tristan, I think, should have been diverted out of the criminal justice system. We've got to stop criminalizing people who have mental health issues. And so just, I think it goes, it's a big step in the right direction to recognizing that we shouldn't just automatically be, you know, packing people away either for mental health treatment or, or criminalizing them and putting them in jails. We've got to look at different ways that we can divert them and the support that they have with their families, the support they have in the community, other resources that we may have available to people to deal with mental health. So, you know, that's good. Um, you know, when I went up to Tallahassee at first, I didn't think that there was going to be anything much accomplished. Um, I'd been told that the legislative legislatures weren't, weren't really interested in mental health issues, particularly when they were linked to the criminal justice system. But I found just the opposite when I went up there. I found a lot of very caring, compassionate people, very passionate people um, who really care about these issues and care about change. Um, I really kind of felt like, you know, there's this whole big mountain of change that needs to be made, but there's more people gathering at the bottom of the mountain to tackle it. And so that was encouraging. The legislature so far continues to refuse to accept the idea of Medicaid expansion. I think that's one of the things you'd like to see them reconsider maybe going forward next year and the years after. Oh, absolutely. I hate that this is a political issue because it shouldn't be. It should be what's in the best interest of our state and what's in the best interest of the individuals in our state. Doing this, what you did this year and sort of speaking out uh, I know it's been difficult, and I, I know that there's probably part of you that just wants to put this to the side, and, and no one would be upset if you decided not to continue to advocate. That's, you know, you have a lot going. You're, you're raising Tristan's two sons, you know, and, and dealing with, you know, your own life and, and taking on this battle as well. Why, you know, do you think that you'll continue? How long can you continue doing this? And, and do you ever think about putting it aside and just sort of just, just worrying about yourself for a change? You know, it's funny because I was listening on the car radio uh, today on the way home to Time in a Bottle. I don't know if you remember that old Jim Croce song. And, you know, I started thinking about the time that I have in my life remaining and time with my grandchildren and time with, uh, with Cody and Colton and, and it is, is this worth my efforts? Am I going to accomplish anything by doing all this or not? I don't know, but you know, kind of bottom line what it comes down to, Jim, and I said this at the end of um, the Senate hearing um, when I was up there, I said, you know, I've got a 16 year old who knows what's going on, but I've got an eight year old who doesn't. Um, we haven't told Colton, uh, Tristan's youngest son, um, how he died. He knows that he died, but he thinks that he was just sick in his head. And, and died. He doesn't know all the whole circumstances surrounding him, which are just horrific. And someday I'm going to have to explain all that to him. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to say, look, Colton, this shouldn't have happened to your dad. You know, this was horrible what happened. He should have been treated better. He should have gotten better care. He should have, um, he should still be here with us, but he's not. And now Colton, let me tell you the good part. This is what happened because your dad died. I want this to be, if this can be a catalyst for change, if we can use this to change the system so that they can understand that, that Tristan's life had meaning 
and um, accomplish something for other people, then, then yeah, I think I still need to keep battling it for, for those reasons. And, and, and just, I don't want anybody else to go through this. I mean, if we can, if, if my voice can create change, then I need to keep using my voice, no matter how hard it is. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 